Should you be spending as much as $3,000 on a Les Paul type guitar? Today we have an unboxing of a guitar from a company called All-in-One Guitars, a company that I feel like not enough people are familiar with. The company is made up of about 20 people in California. The guitars are manufactured in China and then shipped to California where each guitar is individually checked and set up before they're sent out to customers. They make Strat types, Tele types, probably what they're most known for, the LP type. They have an SG type too, and a few different bases, mostly like a jazz bass type thing. Here, we have an LP. So the box did arrive in pretty good condition. It looks like it's packed very nice, but we have a knife, we have a box, we can open it up. We have tape on the top as usual. We also have some big staples, which you don't always see, but it's a nice little extra added layer of security. A little bit of cardboard on the right side to keep it from all the way pushing on the right side of the wall of the box. Let's pull it out. Oh, well, that was fun. I just cleaned up a bunch of coffee that I spilled. I pushed the box right into my cup of coffee that I made and it spilled all over my fridge. So I had to clean that. And now we're back. The guitar, the second box, is out of the big box. And we have a knife and we have a box and we can open it up. Let's go ahead and do that, finally. So we have your pretty standard guitar-shaped cardboard box. It has a cardboard-like packaging on the outside. And uh, let's go ahead and open it up. Boom, boom. And this top part comes out like this. And inside, you have it packaged very nice and cleanly. Tape over the top, styrofoam on the top, here on the sides, all over the guitar, really. We do have an Allen key right there. I definitely do not have enough of those. Now that we've removed the tape, the guitar pulls up like this, and it was very snugly in there. Cardboard box, be gone. Now let me tell you, go away. Let me alone. Now I can tell you right away, it's a good weight. It's a heavier type guitar, a heavier type LP, but what color is it? What does it actually look like? Well, well now it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for, your first look. We have a black and cream and gold LP. Gold hardware, cream pickup rings, a cream pickguard, and very nice cream binding. We do have, hmm, we do have a little bit of damage here in the finish on this side of the neck. It's not super great. Do we have any other finish imperfections? So one thing I could definitely tell you is the finish is maybe not as nice as I would like it to be. There's definitely a little bit of damage right there, scuffing on the finish. There's a little bit of, uh, there's a mark there. There's um, around the edge here, there's some kind of like buffing marks. So it's not the cleanest finish. I don't know how much you could see on camera. But uh, otherwise, the specifications of the guitar, the neck is ebony. It is not rosewood. It is an ebony neck. It has nickel frets. They are not stainless steel. 12 inch radius, like a Les Paul. Like we said, gold hardware cream binding, and um, two-part bridge and tailpiece. Alnico 5, I believe, pickups. So we have a little bit of a damage on the one knob here. It actually rubbed away. The knobs seem nice. The pots feel good. They're maybe a little easy to turn. And uh, like I said, the only thing that I really noticed right away is the finish is maybe not as nice as I would like it to be. It's not really buffed as much as I would like it to be. And the binding here the finish kind of goes over the binding a little bit right there. And um, so overall, the fit and finish, I would give maybe like a six or a seven out of 10. If we look at the headstock here, if you're wondering, it is an AIO headstock. It's pretty unique. It has a little cutout right there and it has a little cross right there too. And uh, it's pretty metal, if you ask me. The nut is a very nice nut. It looks like it's cut well. It's seated maybe a little in too much on this side, but it looks good, and it looks like it's cut well. Now, is it in tune? It's almost in tune. The action is very, very low. 
and it feels really, really good. Well, that feels really good to play. The action is really low, uh, maybe even less than two millimeters, and the neck is totally straight, so it's a very well-made guitar outside of maybe those fit and finish issues. I can maybe even raise the action a little bit for my taste. But overall, what's really impressive is the neck, the frets are really, really level. It feels really, really good to play. When you get a Gibson, all of them are plecked. These are not plecked. This is done by hand and it feels immaculate. Obviously on this, you don't have the fret nibs, the binding that goes over the edges of the frets. But uh, overall, what do you think? I think that looks really beautiful, really great. Outside of those maybe finish issues, um, it would be pretty perfect. But we can, um, I'm probably gonna shoot them a message and say, hey, you know, can we do anything about that? And hopefully, maybe we can. There's a little bit of uh, imperfection in the finish up here too. They are Grovers, they are mini Grovers, and they have plastic on them. So let's go ahead and take the plastic off of those, take the plastic off the pick guard, plug it in, and get a quick demo of what it sounds like. Hmm. But honestly, the weight is not bad. I thought it was gonna weigh more. It weighs about eight pounds, maybe even less. It's balanced really well. Let's go ahead and tune it up. A little loose, maybe. Grovers are not, not the best tuners. But we shall see if it stays in tune better than a Gibson going to the G. Yeah, these are definitely mini Grovers because they don't have that much play. Now we're in tune. That feels amazing and sounds incredible. Let's be real, that, that, that feels great. Let's plug it in now. We have a Fender Mustang amp that can simulate a couple different types of amps. Right now we have it on a deluxe reverb. Here's how it sounds, what's going on. Might have to plug the amp in. Okay, and here's how it sounds clean on the neck. Great sounding pickups. Fantastic. The nut is cut great. There's no bending on the G. We add a tube screamer. These are great sounding pickups. Beautiful setup, amazing frets, great harmonics, pickups sound great. If we go to the middle position. And if we go to the bridge. Sounds really fantastic. If we put on a rat type distortion, we get this. Let's try a different type of amp. Let's go to a rectifier type amp, back to the bridge, put a tube screamer on, and here's what you get. Back to the neck. So, I think it sounds pretty good. Those pickups sound better than I thought they would. Um, maybe not, the bridge is maybe not my favorite. I really like the neck. Um, I was thinking of putting some Fishman Fluence modern pickups in here. The Fishman sent out. And uh, I still think we might do that. I'm gonna send a message. 
out to AIO, let them know about the little bit of uh, finish imperfections. And then, in a second part, we'll do more of a full review of the guitar, give it a score, and maybe change those pickups if we need to. But what do you think? All-in-one guitars, AIO guitars, based in California, guitars made in China, really good quality. Um, really impressed outside of maybe the finish, but we could probably do something about that. Um, could probably do an exchange or get a partial refund. I will let you know what the fine people over at AIO recommend. But thank you for watching. Until next time, play guitar and be awesome. <laughs>